The New Mutants are the second class of students who have joined the Xavier Institute to get a better understanding of their powers and their place in the world. While this ensemble book focuses on teenagers, the story gets thematically very heavy as these students are thrown headfirst into real-world conflict after real-world conflict, often with lasting mental or physical effects. This is one of my favorite X-Men spin-off titles from Chris Claremont, and what I've always really appreciated about this run was with such an array of characters, they still each have their own unique ideological evolution throughout the story. Today, we're specifically taking a look at one of the most narratively prominent members of the New Mutants, and one of Marvel's most beloved Native American characters, Danny Moonstar. Let me preface with a few things. First of all, I'm only going to be examining Danny throughout Chris Claremont's run on the New Mutants. It's also extremely important to note that while it's great Claremont had such a diverse cast here and introduced a Native American character in such a lead role, there are still some pitfalls of the character, especially when it comes to leaning into cultural stereotypes, and we can discuss that a little bit more later on. Overall though, Danny is one of my favorite characters, and her character arc and growth throughout the run, in my opinion, is very successful. To truly examine her growth though, we've got to start with her first appearance in Marvel graphic novel number 4, and extrapolate from that what her baseline ideologies and outlook are. We are first introduced to Danny as a kind of transcendentalist character who has a strong connection with nature and spirituality. Our first glimpse of her is her meditating in the mountains near Sundance, Colorado. A mountain lion approaches her as if to attack, but we quickly learn that Danny has a positive connection and kinship with this animal. In this narrative vignette, we also meet her grandfather, Black Eagle, who is urging her to leave the mountain so she can better learn how to use her gifts, aka her mutant abilities. Now, before we talk about her mutant power and see a showcase of it, it's important to highlight Danny's reaction to this guidance from her grandfather. Upon learning the name of the man her grandfather wants her to go study with, Charles Xavier, she furiously questions this because Charles Xavier is a white man. Danny's aversion to putting some faith in Charles Xavier, a white man over her own family isn't undeserved. There's certainly historical precedent for not being too keen on this idea. And there's actually an extra layer here too regarding the old plan of kill the Indian, save the man, where Native American children were being sent off to boarding schools in an attempt to assimilate them. Indigenous populations being cruelly and forcibly assimilated was a real issue and there's a terrible history to it. And so Danny knowing all this and having lived her life with her people and having heard their stories naturally has some biases. And she starts off from this ideological perspective of all white men are their enemies. Danny's anger at her grandfather's suggestion and seemingly betrayal has her lose control of her mutant ability and activates it in this moment. This creates a ghostly image of her grandfather being beaten to death. You see, Danny's mutant ability has to do with dreams, desires, and nightmares. She basically has the psychic ability to telepathically reach into your head and create illusionary manifestations of those thoughts. She is basically a dream catcher. And this is where we can briefly talk a little bit about Claremont's creation and treatment of Native American characters because the stereotypes that Native American characters are often built around are based on their connections with nature, animals, and their spirituality. That's why we often see Native American characters being depicted as people who can speak to animals, people who can tap into magical abilities via spellcraft, and obviously, as we've already seen and will continue to see, this is the case with Danny as well. She certainly has those nature and animal ties as we just saw with the mountain lion and as we'll also see kind of explored with her connection with Rain Sinclair, aka Wolfsbane, when she enters her animal form. Now, as far as the magic side of things, Claremont has certainly leaned hard into that with another Native American character he created, Forge. And he does it with Danny Moonstar too, in a way, but this is also a science fiction story where basically everyone has some magical abilities to some degree. And so I'm not quite sure how to, and it's not really my place to balance that out and decide whether that's leaning into stereotypes again or not. But I bring up this subject as something for us all to think about and be a little more aware about. Regardless, this introductory scene for Danny is incredibly important because it sets the foundation for Danny's consistent internal battle between between upholding her cultural beliefs and a fear of assimilation washing them away, which is a completely genuine and valid fear for her to have. 
After finding out that Charles Xavier was Danny's deceased father's best friend and blood brother, she reluctantly agrees to obey her grandfather's wishes and to study at the Xavier Institute for Gifted Youngsters. Now, it's important to note here, since I just mentioned Danny's father is dead, this isn't exactly true because at this moment with Danny, her mother and father are only technically presumed dead, but we'll get to that later. However, just like my video examining Rain Sinclair, Danny's relationship with her powers is also a rocky one where she initially sees them as more of a curse than anything else. That's because when her powers manifested themselves at puberty, like they do with most mutants, she created an image of her parents' death and shortly after they went missing. Additionally, Danny started having vivid and consistent nightmares about a demonic bear which she believed to be the entity that killed her parents. We'll get back to that too. But again, for her ideological foundation here, it's important we know that she fears her powers, her parents are gone, and she's been looked after by her grandfather father ever since, who is about to be killed at the hands of Donald Pierce, a Hellfire Club member who has gone rogue and is planning on overthrowing the current leaders of the organization. Her grandfather's death actually further solidifies her anger and confusion towards her powers, since the illusion she created earlier was her grandfather dying, a premonition he had seen in his dreams as well, and was his greatest fear that she pulled from his head. So at this moment, before further events lead her to join Charles Xavier and his new mutants, Danny has no one, she's pretty pretty angry at mankind, and while she puts on a brave face, she's struggling with her powers and her faith in the world in general, and it seems like one of the only reasons she doesn't just completely give up is because of her Cheyenne Native American cultural heritage pushing her forward and keeping her strong. As Donald Pierce continues to attack Danny after having killed her grandfather and her pet mountain lion, Charles Xavier, Rain, and Karma show up to save her, and it looks like, given the opportunity and festering in anger, Danny is willing to kill one of the Hellfire soldiers who attacked. She is persuaded out of it, but swears she'll kill Donald Pierce, the man directly responsible for this attack and her grandfather's death. Ultimately, when the opportunity to kill Pierce presents itself, Danny's new friend, Rain, is hurt and Danny Danny is drawn more towards helping her than killing Pierce. A critical moment for the character as she chooses the well-being of a friend over her own personal revenge mission. This sets up her path of being one of the characters who makes the tough decisions and leads the new mutants down the path that will be beneficial for all of them. So with that, the team is assembled and class is in session. It's absolutely worth mentioning, in regards to the outfit the students wear at Xavier's Institute, Danny is firm about incorporating some of her Cheyenne culture into to her uniform. This signifies that she's becoming more open to the idea of studying and learning here, but she's still not going to let anyone or anything wash away what she really is and what her culture means to her. A concept that the X-Men books and its spin-off titles love to explore is found family, because in most instances either our cast of characters' family has abandoned them or hates them for their abilities, or their family is gone and they're all alone, such is with Danny when she arrives at Xavier's. And she's starting to really make these interpersonal connections and bonds with the new mutants, but her inability to control her powers in a safe way holds her back, brings out her insecurities, and presents itself as an obstacle for developing any relationships further. For example, she almost immediately loses control of her powers and brings out a manifestation of Karma's worst nightmare, which is an extremely traumatizing event that happened to her which involved her own assault and the death of her mother. Karma lashes out in sadness and anger at this, but eventually does forget give Danny. That, however, doesn't change the fact that Danny is worried about doing this again and is worried about the implications of her power, seeing as how she saw her parents' death, saw her grandfather's death, and doesn't want to lose this newfound family or do anything to hurt what it could possibly grow into. Eventually, with the help and guidance from her friends and Professor Xavier, Danny starts to become more confident in her abilities and subsequently herself. She's actually even the first student of this new class to complete her Danger Room obstacle course that was designed to test her abilities. But Danny is about to be tested by another big problem, as since the death of her grandfather and since her arrival at the Xavier Institute, her nightmares of a demonic bear-like entity have returned, and this time it's not only threatening herself, but also her new teammates, and now she doesn't have the strength or wisdom or mysticism of her grandfather to protect her. This brings us to what I have no problem saying is likely the most well-known and popular story focused on Danny Moonstar, and that is 
is the Demon Bear Saga. Obviously, I'm not doing a comprehensive history of the New Mutants in this video, but I should also mention that two new members have joined the team preceding this storyline, and that is Magic and Magma. This story is the culmination and bookend of something that has haunted Danny for her entire life, the Demon Bear, which is a real entity, a real threat, and it's getting realer and realer for Danny every single night. And while Danny is afraid of it, she's no coward. She starts spending time in the danger room, prepping for the fight that she knows is coming. Interestingly enough, since they become much better friends later on, Magic notices something is wrong and presses Danny for more information about what's going on, but at this time, Danny, similar to Rain as we looked at in the past, but less severely, believes Ileana has evil in her and an evil that may even match the demon bears, so she doesn't really reveal too much to her. And like I said, while she's afraid, Danny is still brave and courageous. She's finally decided that she's had enough of this demon inflicting pain upon her life, and she goes off into the woods and calls out to the bear, challenging it, beckoning for them to end this once and for all. The demon bear does show itself, and she valiantly makes an effort to defeat it, but she's not able to do it all by herself, and is struck down by it and gravely injured. Danny's team rushes her body to the hospital, where she has an emergency surgery performed on her, while the demon bear is still present and trying to capture her soul. Through their psychic rapport, Rain speaks to Danny while she's being operated on for a broken back, and Rain senses Danny is dying, but Danny does warn them about the bear, which they didn't quite believe in before, but certainly do now. The demon bear eventually does lock on and attacks them again at the hospital, and the team of the remaining new mutants take it on to protect Danny as her surgery is being done. The new mutants actually prove quite formidable, and the demon bear ends up transporting them to its turf, the Badlands, which is a separate plane of existence, to continue the rest of the fight. This story really cements the bond that Danny has been able to form with her newfound family. They're willing to put their lives on the line to distract this demonic entity from its true prey that is Danny. See, this is where Danny was stubborn and headstrong and wanted to solve her problems herself, and because of that, she was injured. And the truth is, she didn't need to be. She kept these details about the demon bear from her team, she didn't let them know how severe the problem was, and what this story does is really strengthen the bond and trust of the whole team by the end. And I mentioned the death of Danny's parents before, but this story actually reunites her with them, as when the demon bear is finally defeated, it's learned that her parents were just being enslaved by the demonic entity, and are now finally free. Danny not only has her found family, but now she has her real family back. All the pieces of what were her shattered life are finally coming back together, and they're coming back together stronger than ever. Now, she just has to overcome her shattered body, but luckily, one of the Morlocks helps heal Danny for the most part. She'll still be confined to a wheelchair for a bit, but it's much better than a permanently broken back. As Danny recovers and they regain old teammates and get new teammates as well, she becomes way more confident along their adventures and becomes a guiding voice for all teammates as she becomes the co-leader of the New Mutants alongside Cannonball. There are a lot of nice character moments and development that happens in between this, but they basically just reinforce the ideas we've already discussed. So next up, I want to look at a storyline that really changed the character of Danny Moonstar once again, and that is the Asgardian Wars event. So the basic barebones plot of the Asgardian Wars storyline is that Loki gets so down bad for Storm, he kidnaps her in an attempt to make her his queen. As both the X-Men team and the New Mutants try to save Storm, Loki conjures up Enchantress to cause them mayhem and stop their rescue mission. The team gets split up and they each have their own unique moments of character development, but of course, for this video, we'll be strictly focusing on Danny. So it's kind of interesting here because the animal-loving, nature-loving Native American side of Danny Danny intertwines a bit with this obviously fictional Eurocentric Asgardian mythology because Danny comes across a Pegasus that is trapped and is being hunted. She helps this Pegasus out, and we sort of get a parallel situation to her connection with Wolfbane, as Danny feels an instant similar kinship with this Pegasus too. Again, this is likely leaning into that Native American stereotype, as Danny has kind of always had an animal companion in a way, her mountain lion ridge racer then Wolfsbane, and now this Pegasus who's named Brightwind, by the way. Though this companion kind of transcends it in a way, and there's an even deeper meaning to their bond. Basically, the Pegasus has chosen Danny, and they're spiritually bonded now, and this turns Danny into a Valkyrie, which is a big and important role in Asgardian lore. So now she's a character that's got her foot in so many worlds. Her Cheyenne roots, 
her leadership with the New Mutants, and now her Asgardian status as a Valkyrie. In addition to gaining a winged steed, a great resource for a character whose powers are less tangible and less transportational, Dany also is now able to tap into a portion of Odin power, which allows her to see the mark of death above those who would be dying soon. Which really adds a lot to the character, as a large portion of her life has involved battles of life and death, or perceived death, so now there's a whole new layer to her relationship with it. This, in fact, leads into what is my absolute favorite Dany Moonstar story, and what is a great book and to her character arc in Claremont's run on the New Mutants. I should mention there's a few issues after this that Claremont wrote, but this is the big Danny issue and her final dedicated story under Claremont's writing, and that is of course New Mutants issue 41, Way of the Warrior. Danny has been slightly disillusioned of the Xavier Institute, which is being led by Magneto at the moment by the way, after the events of Secret Wars 2, and she returns home to her parents in Colorado. She's very reflective in this issue and in her head is trying to balance out her thoughts on her place in the world and her role as a Cheyenne, a mutant, and a Valkyrie, and she even is having conflicting thoughts on the path that modern life is taking things, as noted by her mentioning the fact that she loves the stores that are being built around and in her homeland, but also misses its natural state. She's a character being torn in many different directions, and she hasn't yet figured out how to process all of that. And this is actually where I'll give some extra credit to Claremont even, because this goes against stereotypes for Native American characters, as they're usually depicted as firmly against any type of traditional traditionally modern civilization taking roots. But Danny's better written than that, it's not a binary situation, it's a much more complicated puzzle for her to solve in her own head. As Danny wanders the local mall with all of the big thoughts and worries bouncing around her brain, she runs into an old friend of hers, Pat Roberts. Danny and Pat were friends before her mutant powers manifested themselves, and actually she was having dinner with him and his family when they did. They got into an argument and Danny accidentally manifested Pat's greatest desire and and fear for everyone to see. She ran off, and this was something they never resolved. This interaction with Pat becomes very heated and aggressive on his side because he is presenting as if he hates her now. And this is a pivotal moment where her power to see the mark of death on somebody comes into play, as she sees this over Pat Roberts. And later on, Pat is drinking and driving, and he ends up getting in a wreck and getting stuck in the middle of a blizzard. Danny learns of this from an emergency scanner she has, and she's basically the only one who can help him at the time since she can fly above all the snow with the help of Brightwind. Danny finds the spot of the wreck and finds Pat in bad shape, but because she can't physically lift his body onto Brightwind, she drags his body into a cave to help shield him from the harsh weather as she tries to resuscitate him. I want to mention that while yes, Danny has had past friendship with this character, he's been nothing but hateful to her in their recent interaction, but she still wants to help him, and I think that signals she's come a long way since her first appearance in Marvel Graphic Novel No. 4. She's learned that all human life is sacred, even the lives of those who hate you and might wish you were better off dead. Speaking of which, Pat is awake now and Danny accidentally, in her emotional state, taps into his greatest desire, which is an image of him killing her. But then another one of his greatest desires also manifests itself and it's an image of them in love and married, thus reflecting the complicated mental state of Pat and his array of feelings towards Danny, which ultimately stem from his own issues in insecurities. He felt deeply hurt and betrayed by Danny's accidental actions in the past and the fact that they didn't get to talk about it in that moment. But while this may be the foundational breakthrough to mend their relationship, Pat is marked for death and despite Danny's best efforts, death comes knocking and in the form of a cowboy. And Danny, defiant and strong as ever, stands up to this natural being and even seemingly defeats it in this moment, all for the opportunity to have a second chance at a relationship with her old friend. But Pat has passed out, and while Danny waits for him to get better at the hospital, Death greets her again there in another form, an old Indian woman sitting with her at the hospital. A conversation about death and its nature ensues, and Danny learns that even if she wins, even if she prevails, prevents death from taking Pat's soul today, he'd just be stuck in a coma and not able to pass on gently. She learns an important lesson here, and that is that sometimes a warrior, and even a friend, has to choose their battles very carefully, a lesson that will stick with her throughout the rest of her time leading the New Mutants. And eventually Danny realizes she can be many things, and she can have many roles, and that doesn't mean any of them get diluted. Danny's path in Chris Claremont's New Mutants run was chaotic and sad, and exciting and 
truly tested her spirits and limits, but the resultant character growth leaves us with a Danny Moonstar who's strong-willed, righteous in all she does, someone who always learns from her mistakes and will speak up if she feels like someone else is making one, and is a true hero to all mutants and to mankind. While she didn't originally want to come to Xavier's Institute, she found a new family there, she found her old family there, and she found out how strong she was in mind, soul, and body. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It was a long one, so I appreciate it if you stuck around till the end. I really hope you guys enjoy this type of content because I enjoy making it. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know if there's another character in the New Mutants you'd like to see a video done on as well. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day.